Maybe this sounds familiar to you. You make some commitment to yourself that you're gonna try to change your life for the better, but then you don't follow through. Maybe you get distracted or maybe you're always procrastinating. Maybe the work that you know that you need to do to attain that goal, you always put off to tomorrow, but then that tomorrow never comes. If this is something that happens to you often, you might think that your problem is a lack of discipline or a lack of willpower, but I would submit to you that those aren't your problems at all. And in fact, in this video, I'm gonna tell you what the problem actually is and how you can fix it. People who rely on willpower to make big changes in their lives almost always fail, and the people who are successful at doing just about anything big in life are successful because they don't rely on willpower. The problem is that you just don't have very much willpower. Willpower is a finite resource, and that's totally normal, right? Nobody has this infinite supply of willpower. Willpower is something that you run out of quickly. So if you're trying to push yourself through willpower, uh, that's a pretty good way to ensure that you're not going to succeed. Trying to make any significant change in your life through willpower is kind of like trusting your car battery to power your car. It might work for some short amount of time, but pretty soon you're going to end up stuck on the side of the road with a dead battery. Because the battery is just not that powerful because it's not meant to drive the car. Same thing is true for willpower. Willpower exists to get you to do the things that you have to do that you don't want to do. So if you have to wake up at 6 a.m. to go to jury duty, uh, right, there's no reward in that, it sucks. But you need to do it so that you don't get sent to jail or get a fine or I don't know, whatever the punishment is for failing to go to jury duty. You need willpower to push you do to do that because that's something that you don't want to do. So hopefully you have that little bit of willpower that can get you up one day every few years to go to jury duty. But what if you had to do that every day? What if you had to get up at 6 a.m. every day to go to jury duty? How long would your willpower last? How long would it be before you start going late and before you start falling asleep and putting innocent people in jail? Willpower is not really sustainable because willpower is just to get you to do the bare minimum for things that you don't want to do. Which, by the way, is why most people kind of suck at their jobs, right? If people, most people have jobs that they don't like, so they do just enough to not get fired because that's all their finite supply of willpower will push them to do. They like to do a good job at their job so they get promoted to manager and they get, get a salary increase, etc. But they never do, right? Because they're relying on willpower because it's something they don't want to do. So you can't really be expected to drive your behavior through willpower alone. And in fact, a lot of the most successful people don't really have that much willpower, right? They rely on more powerful factors. And I hope that that comes as somewhat of a relief to some of you guys. So if that comes as a relief to you knowing that, type in the comments. Let me know if that's a relief to you. So you know that you're not supposed to power your car from the battery, right? The battery is just a little bit of power to give a start to the engine. And the engine is what actually powers your car. So if your willpower is your battery, then what's your engine? Well, the engine, which you should be relying on a lot more than willpower, is your passion for the thing that you seek. Your passion should be taking on a lot more of the heavy load than your willpower. And actually, there's a couple other factors that should be taking on part of that load too, which I'll talk about later in the video. But the engine is your passion, and passion comes from a dream that's both attractive and real. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up icon because it makes YouTube like me better. Hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button because I'm putting out a lot of awesome videos in the future and you don't want to miss any of those. So a dream has to be attractive and it has to be real in order to inspire passion in you. And what I mean by attractive is it has to be good enough that it really lights a fire in your soul, that you really think that is what I desire. And that may be different for different people. It might be something material, it might be a nice house, it might be a nice car, or it might be something to help a family member, something, someone that you love, or it might be to help a cause that you love, or most likely it's some combination of all of those factors together. The more attractive you make this mental image of you achieving this success, the better it's gonna be. And that works for if you just wanna get in shape, for example, right? You can just imagine what it feels like to be healthy and vibrant and full of energy and imagine what it's like to have all the girls interested in you and imagine like the confidence that you have going to parties and going out in crowds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. As, more, as much benefit as you can heap on this goal, 
that's possible, the more attractive your dream becomes. So take some time with this, enjoy this. You know, I talk a lot about this in this video, all about an awesome book which shows you how to do this like really in depth in a really, really compelling way. So I definitely recommend you check that out. And then also the dream has to be real. And what I mean by real is that you believe that you can attain it. And this goes back to faith, which I talk about all the time. Faith is so crucially important. You have to have faith on a few different levels. For one thing, you have to have faith that the goal is possible to attain. And then you have to have faith that you are capable of attaining this goal. And then you have to have the faith that you can attain the goal by working for it. It's not just a matter of a random lottery. It's not just getting lucky. Faith is so important because faith actually gives you energy and makes you want to do things, whereas doubt robs you of energy. Think about yourself. If you have something that you would like to achieve, but you don't believe that you can achieve it, right? You have doubt instead of faith. How much energy does that give you? How much energy does that give you to go accomplish that goal? Let me know in the comments. Does pursuing a goal that you don't believe that you're capable of achieving, does that give you energy or rob you of energy? Jesus says in the verse Matthew 6, 34, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, that is tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. What he's saying is you shouldn't worry about the future because worrying displays a lack of faith. If you're doing the things that you're supposed to do today, then you don't have to worry about the future if you have faith. However, if you doubt, if you don't believe in the words of Jesus, if you don't believe that following the process, doing the things that you're supposed to do, is going to have a positive outcome in the future, if you don't have that faith, then you are going to be worrying about the future and you are going to be robbing yourself of energy in the present. And ironically, you're going to be more likely to bring about the things that you're already worrying about. You know, I always thought it was kind of funny that the best MMA fighters are very religious. Like, they like to pray before their matches and they, you know, thank God for their victory afterwards. And I always thought it was kind of weird because it's like they're praying, please God, help me beat the tar out of this guy on the other side of the ring for me. And I thought that was a little strange, but the fact is that having this faith that God is on their side, that God wants them to win, that it is their destiny to win, their destiny to be champions, even if it's a delusional faith, even if it's based on nothing, right? Because I don't believe that, that God favors one MMA fighter over another, but they believe it. And because they believe it, it gives them this giant amount of energy that drives them and makes them the best. So if you have faith, plus an attractive dream, then that creates passion. And that passion creates anticipation. What anticipation is, is imagining a future outcome that is desirable to you and gaining energy from that. As opposed to the opposite, if you have doubt, doubt creates anxiety. And anxiety is robbing present energy, thinking about a future outcome that you believe will be undesirable to you to borrow an expression from Myron Golden. So your engine in this car analogy is passion. Passion is what drives you to do the things that you want to do, as opposed to willpower is what drives you to do the things that you would have to do, but you don't want to do. You can see why passion is so much more powerful. If you can get yourself into that headspace where you actually want to do the things that are the things that you need to do in order to create your goals, well, you have a much better energy source than when you do things you don't want to do because you're forcing yourself. Now, I told you that there is a third factor driving this, and the third factor is the most powerful, and that one is called habit. Habit, in the car analogy, is the momentum. If you think about it, you use your willpower to start the engine. Once the engine is rolling, uh, you drive, and then you get up to speed, and then once you get up to speed, the engine is working a little bit, but mostly you're going on momentum. Which is a very good thing, because even though passion is much better than willpower, passion is also something you can't rely on consistently. You're going to have bad days. You're going to be discouraged sometimes. It's going to happen. It happens to the best of us. If you want to keep driving, even through those times, what you need is habit. Habit is what happens when you do things regularly enough that you no longer need either willpower or passion to drive them. For example, for most people, brushing their teeth is a habit. Right? You don't need willpower to brush your teeth. You don't really need to, to force yourself to brush your teeth. You just kind of do it. And you also don't need passion to brush your teeth. I mean, probably 
you aren't brushing your teeth because you're thinking about how amazing your smile is gonna look. You're just doing it out of sheer habit. It's you do it because that's what you do every day. And if by any chance you're not in the habit of brushing your teeth every day, I would recommend that you start because people will like you better. So you could imagine how much more productive you become when you can transfer the good behaviors that you think that you need willpower for, when you can transfer those to habit. Right, if it's a huge burden to go to the gym, for example, maybe you're trying to get in shape, maybe you're fat and lazy and you sit on the couch eating Doritos all day and you wanna get in shape. Well, the first time you go to the gym, it's gonna be difficult, it's gonna be painful, you're not going to enjoy yourself. But if you do it enough, and if you do it consistently enough, like in the same day, in the same time period, then you eventually turn it into a habit and you don't really need to think about it anymore. All of a sudden, it doesn't require willpower and it doesn't require passion, it's just something that you do. Which means that you can use your supply of willpower and your supply of passion to push you into yet another productive behavior. So you can imagine the more good behaviors that you transfer into habit so you don't have to think about them anymore, the more productive you will become. And you keep being productive even if you're feeling discouraged and even if you're in a bad mood. So ultimately, you wanna push as much as you possibly can to habit. So that's the car that drives your life. It's a battery called willpower, it's an engine called passion, and momentum that's called habit. And actually there's a fourth factor which is super important and that is your environment. And I don't really have time to talk about that in this video, but I will do that in a future video. So make sure that if you haven't already, hit the subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get that video. And if you wanna know how to best use your limited amount of willpower in such a way that you conserve it efficiently when being proactive instead of reactive, check out this video here. And if you found what I had to say here helpful and you think it'd be helpful for some other people too, then please share this video on your social media. It'd be helpful for me and it would be helpful for your friends.